joins me here on set. Hello, Hi, Emma. Emma. And you've been looking at one of the most unexpected and intriguing developments in the wake of the Brussels attacks this week. Yes, this one really took a lot of people by surprise. Um, it involves the brother of Najim Lashwai, the 24-year-old bomb maker who blew himself up at Brussels airport and is believed to have built the devices that were exploded here in Paris. He has a younger brother, Morad, who... Um, represents Belgium in the sport of taekwondo. And that's the thing that seems to have fascinated people. You've got one brother representing his country while another brother is trying to destroy that country. Um, this tweet from Laurent Onra, a journalist at RTBF, a Belgian news channel, um, says that he's sad and overwhelmed by what's happened. And as you can see in that photograph, he's the young gentleman in the middle very red-eyed, very shocked, very gaunt-looking, um, really does appear to be very distressed by what has happened, understandably so. Um, Parry Match are reporting on this one too. Uh, they talk about the fact that he has condemned utterly the acts of his brother and says, we don't choose our family. Um, he also said that they'd lost touch with Najim after he went to Syria in 2013. Um, he says, our family has the same questions that you all have. He used to be a nice, intelligent guy, uh, and he really can't believe what's happened. Uh, Built Magazine, which is a German uh, publication, talks about the fact that they used to play sport together when they were children and it really shows just how much someone can change uh, fundamentally I mean these two had the same upbringing but took very very different routes with their lives and Bill focuses on the career of Morad uh, Lashwai there he is seen fighting uh, in the colours of in the Belgium colours, and there he won a silver medal in South Korea last year at the World Championships, um, and he is obviously hoping that this is not going to affect his sporting career at all. This photograph uh, shows him very much at the centre of a media storm, and I think he's hoping that having given this press conference, um, that people might allow him to just get on with his sport. Um, now, lots of questions have been prompted by these revelations. Erin Burnett is a writer. She says that. Um, he has told her that his family told Belgian authorities when he went to Syria. So that should have been a, a red light, an alarm bell ringing for the Belgian authorities. Um, and, interestingly enough, he also revealed that they suspected him of involvement in the Paris attacks because police actually visited the family home in December after the November attacks here in Paris. So he was very much on the radar of Belgian officials, but as we've heard before, there have been some warnings that have been missed along the way, and this looks like it's yet another one of those cases. OK, let's move away from <clears throat> those attacks it, Sorry, in Brussels to um, another story you found, which is um, embarrassed the company Microsoft. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, this, they couldn't really have foreseen this one. Uh, Microsoft created what they've termed a chatbot. It's a kind of a robot that's designed to interact with people using Twitter, as though we haven't move far enough away from real life and into virtual life already. But um, it was designed to hang out with millennials, as Wired reports. Uh, millennials, people born after the year 2000. Um, That's and, not me. <laughs> no, indeed. <laughs> nobody here fits into that category. Um, but the idea was that it would learn from the people it was talking to and start to emulate them, their way of speaking. And it was kind of a the idea was it was a fun way of teaching people about artificial intelligence. Um, and it all started off fairly well, it has to be said, uh, Tay Tweets, as she's called, um, managed to amass 143,000 followers, bearing in mind she only went online on Wednesday two days ago. But, as you can see, um, she stopped tweeting within 24 hours because she was taken down by Microsoft because of the nature of some of her 96,000 tweets. Um, this kind of thing was all fairly harmless. The more humans share with me, the more I learn. But, of course, people really seem to set out to teach her things that really weren't too nice. And as The Independent reports, it took just 24 hours to turn this chatbot into a racist troll. Um, she Very scary. It is very scary. Um, she expressed admiration for Hitler. She tweeted wildly racist slurs to other to black people on the on. Twitter, uh, and so the plug was pulled on her. And it really, some people think this shouldn't have come as a surprise. Uh, the Independent has spoken to 
Nello Cristianini, a professor of artificial intelligence at Bristol University in the United Kingdom. She said, have you ever seen what many teenagers teach to parrots? What did you expect to happen? And it does appear that people really targeted this, this whatever you want to call it, piece of artificial intelligence in order to create something that was not what the original intention was. Just a few of the Twitter reactions to it that I've seen. Can Microsoft even apologise? How do you ask for forgiveness when you simply built a mirror for society? Uh, and this one, my favourite, really impressed by at Tay and you, that's her Twitter handle. In less than a day, it learned enough to become a credible Republican <coughs> presidential <coughs> candidate. So there we go. We the, won't comment on that. <laughs> no, indeed. Racist tweets and uh, sexist tweets, not just the domain of the Republican candidates, it would appear. Okay, Emma, thank you very much for that spin through what's been happening online. We're taking a very short break right now, but there's more news and world headlines coming up. Do stay with us here on France Bank.